Yes, good morning, good afternoon, <laughs> welcome. Okay, thank you all for being here. I see somebody is on a train, um, very uh, nice theme. I actually just got off Amtrak and I think Dave is on Amtrak. So keep into the transit theme here, but I'm Nalani Fixler. I wanted to briefly introduce myself. I'm a senior transportation mobility intern for Dave Sorrell, who is also here. Um, I actually met him at TransitCon last year. Um, so this is a big uh, full circle moment for us as we were able to connect through this really incredible event last year. And I'm, now I get to share, we get to share a bit about the work that we've been doing. So Dave, want to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. David Sorrell, Transportation Demand Management Administrator for UC Berkeley. Been in this role for six, uh, six years and three weeks. And I'm currently waiting for a delayed train leaving Emeryville going to Sacramento. So I'll just say it now, like the beam. Back to you. <laughs> okay, so um, to give you a little bit of a, a background on our department, we are UC Berkeley Parking and Transportation. We're specifically the Alternative Transportation Unit. We are on an auxiliary unit funded through parking revenue and grants. Um, we oversee class pass, which I'll get into in a little bit. That's the student pass program that students basically tax themselves every semester to get unlimited access to the regional bus service, um, micro mobility programs, all campus non car options. Um, our department is our alternative transportation staff, one TDM manager, that's Dave, and four interns. And our programs serve 45,000 undergrad and grad students. Um, so we have the TGM strategic plan. Um, Dave, you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, we'll, we'll just glance over that right quick. So uh, when I took over the role in 2017, our first task was really to look at our strategic plan addressing a lot of our mobility solutions and challenges that it came from the initial TDM study in 2011. Um, so you think about the tenants, and yes, we have the Amtrak train. Uh, we our objective is basically drive down the drive along lane, uh, user friendly programs, address micro mobility, shared mobility, and things like that. Um, but also look to enhance uh, the standing class pass program that's been in existence since 1999. Yeah, thank you. Um, so here you can see our campus um, profile for um, telecommute and transit use. Um, this obviously changed a lot during the pandemic with a lot more people um, just coming to work from home. Um, and during COVID, of course, our transit use went down sharply as well. So essentially, basically what happened is that over the course of three years, uh, the University of California Sustainable Transportation Working Group had uh, collectively worked together to pass a policy guaranteeing our employees to use public transit or at least telecommute coming in, uh, not coming into the office. Um, and as the year and a half or two years have progressed, we have gotten more people to telecommute. However, uh, the average amount of days that a person is in is usually about three days a week. Students, it's closer to four and a half. So I'll talk a little bit about ClassPass. Um, this program was created in 1999. Um, it is a student easy pass program. So each student, when they get their student ID, they also get their class pass. The class pass, um, they pay into about 100 bucks a semester. Um, this was just renewed by ballot measure this year, but it must be renewed every three to six years. Um, it also provides some unlimited access to Bear Transit, which is the campus Bear, the campus shuttles, um, the day shuttles and the night safety shuttles. Um, and we also run the class pass committee, which engages student representatives from the graduate and undergraduate community, as well as AC Transit staff, so that there's an opportunity for feedback on service changes and the overall long term effectiveness of this program. Um, our department also really works to bridge the information gap. We push out our student handbook yearly, which we update every year. Um, and we really try to get this information to students at events, including Cal Day, um, GBO, and also um, communicate with Cal Housing and the co-ops more recently. Um, this is like a 50 page overview of 
all the transit options that are available to students, whether they be um, included in the class pass program, not included in the class pass program, or have student discounts available to students or things like regional tra travel, such as Amtrak or how to get to and from um, the airport. Um, so these are our boardings per month. Um, Dave, do you wanna talk a little bit about COVID? Yeah, so EC Transit is our local agency uh, in the East Bay. And when a student uses Easy Pass, they can get basically anywhere within the Easy Transit system. Uh, over the course of the, at least since uh, 2016, when Easy Passes were switched from a sticker hologram uh, on a student ID, they moved to the Clipper card, which is our regional transit card. And so since 2016, we've been able to work with AC Transit to get the stats to at least acknowledge that utilization runs at about 50%. Uh, and that's, you know, out of roughly 38 to 44,000 students um, for the exclusivity, uh, excluding uh, six masters and grad school programs. So during March, uh, AC Transit did not collect fares for six months, so March to October 2020. Um, and since students have been back, uh, since 2021, um, we've seen a slight increase in the amount of traffic, but also the slight amount of those using passes. And while we're not at our high pre-COVID, still getting 51% of the, you know, utilization rate on campus is pretty good, considering that not everyone wanted to take the bus. Yeah, thank you so much, Dave. Um, so aside from the class pass, there are some other concerns with regards to student transportation and student transportation equity. As many of you know, or many of you may not be familiar with, the Bay Area has a very fragmented transportation system. Um, there's 27 transit agencies, which creates a lot of issues with fare integration and transfers. Seamless Bay Area is an organization that's trying really hard to fix this, but with regards to transportation at UC Berkeley, BART is not included with the class pass, and that's just financially infeasible to add at this time. Um, BART has over 100 fare combinations, and we found that an average of 8.4% of students take BART to campus per our campus transportation survey, and a program like this would run us about one and a half million per year. Um, Dave, I don't know if you want to add anything else about this. It's a perennial ask only for a discount. It's not free. And even at that, uh, our usual revenue is about $10 million annually. Um, we're at about 85% of pre-COVID revenue. Uh, we should be about 93% heading into fiscal year 25. Uh, but at the same time, somebody has to underwrite the program in the event that that $1.5 million kitty goes over. Who's going to pay for that? And unfortunately, it cannot be uh, the institution, at least on the parking side, when we have way too many other things, other priorities. But most importantly, trying to leverage this latent demand is an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah either take the bus or walk to campus. So the, the role of the class pass program is really important. I mean, we work these events like Golden, um, Golden Bear Orientation and we just worked Cal Day and parents are coming to us like, hey, should my kid bring the car to school? Don't bring the car to school, they won't use it. Just take AC Transit and walk, it's free. Um, and then the second question they ask is, well, does that include BART? And no, it doesn't. And so we do recognize that there is a latent demand for BART access for students. Um, we host the class pass forum to engage students to vote on their class pass. I mentioned they need to renew that program. They can leave feedback on the bus and engage with AC Transit and associated students representatives. This is the bus that they brought to campus last year. It's like this little mini bus that one of their mechanics actually made. It's so cute. And then this, most recently they brought a big bus onto campus. And so both are fun. Um, students can engage with the bus and take pictures and have fun. Um, these are some pictures from the most recent event, which was in March. Um, this is me and Dave. Um, this is a student riding on the bus. Um, and they gave out these little crowns that I thought were so cute. So um, 
yeah, students really enjoy these events. I know I really enjoy these events and really just trying to get the word out there to get this program renewed because despite BART not being included in this program, it is a profoundly important program for students to continue being able to have um, affordable and accessible transportation to the grocery store, to and from dorms, other housing, um, to the airport. So yeah. And our campus is served by 13 AC transit routes. So this gets students pretty far, um, as well as Trans Bay routes. Um, we also work to improve st student transportation equity through this basic needs transportation program. Um, it's called PT STEP, um, Parking and Transportation Sustainable Equity Fund. Um, we define basic needs covers transportation as a need, um, especially to those who are economic housing and food insecure. Um, and we really work with the basic needs center, which is on campus to figure out how we can best serve our campus with our existing tools. Um, as I said, we are funded through parking revenue and grants. So we did receive, um, 45,000 for, um, emergency clipper cards, bike share memberships, and gig car share driving credits, which we have been able to provide um, a lot of students with um, this emergency financial assistance. Um, we have these other strategies for campus and student engagement. We have the class pass oversight committee, which I mentioned. We also host the mobility and equity committee, which is designed as more of an ad hoc committee to address student and staff mobility gaps. So everything outside of class pass and all the folks whose programs are not included in class pass. So um, the community at large of UC Berkeley. Um, we also discuss scooter share, bike share, bay pass and food access. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about bay pass. I think also the one thing that we probably, and I noticed this in the chat, uh, utilizing social media, utilizing different levels of channels. Um, and Nalani's done a really good job with uh, some of the, if not a good chunk of the social engagement, utilizing Instagram, uh, utilizing Facebook, even though like our main page got blocked eons ago for some dumb reason, uh, we dabbled in TikTok, we have a YouTube page. Um, we're not like UCLA, which actually has a staff to create wonderful content, but what we've provided is utilizing the student voice to get the word out, which is kind of very, very, very important. Yeah, definitely. We have tried our best to be more on social media. Um, and that's something that we're pursuing in the future, I think, as we hire more Gen Z staff, as like my generation of interns graduates, I feel like the Gen Zers will be better at the TikTok and the social media a little bit more. Um, but yeah. And, and and even with like the geriatric millennial manager who grew up in the Zanga, MySpace, Facebook, Friendster, AOL Instant Messenger, MSM Messenger era. I can say that I only know enough to get away with it and Nalani knows enough to get away with it. But when we look at uh, succession planning, we always want to think ahead as far as like social engagement, because maybe they've got more creative ideas than I do. And I'm pretty boring as it is. Okay, so with that, I will move on to the Bay Pass pilot. Um, this is really exciting in terms of fair integration. Um, this pilot was implemented in August 2022. It is a two-year pilot program run by BART and MTC, which is funded through federal pandemic relief funds. And it really is the first step towards re regional fair integration. Um, aside from UC Berkeley, other institutions are participating in this program, including San Jose State, Midpen Housing, which is an affordable housing provider, San Francisco State, and Santa Rosa Junior College. Um, and the goal of this program from the perspective of BART and MTC was to choose um, choose programs that already had an existing pass. Um, so for instance, we already had the class pass. San Francisco State has something similar. All of these institutions had something similar because they wanted to test the mode shift if you include all of the other 27 Bay Area transit agencies for free um, and cover those fares as well. From, from both a transportation demand management standpoint, even though only 8% of our students drive to campus, it's pretty important to try and kind of nick 
that 8%, try to get it as down as much as possible to a degree that we leverage eliminating barriers to access, but also answering the call that the students have been making to me at least for the past six years and three weeks. Yeah, so some of the objectives are to learn from the behavior changes of participants, study the effect of the pilot on ridership, inform sustainability goals, and form a permanent program. And we have had discussions amongst internal stakeholders when we first started conversations amongst rolling out this program that this would be, this was decided by Barton MTC, that this would be a randomized group, that one third of the campus population would receive this pass. So we did ask to include a small control group, about 600 based on super commuter and or financial need. Unfortunately, we were not able to um, get passes for those folks. They really wanted to test and see um, the impacts of this from a, from a, from a totally randomized trial. Um, we did have a communications plan. We had social media. This is the initial post that I put out about this program. Um, just trying to be really blunt that not all students will be selected to participate in this. Um, we understand that that is a financial, there is a financial barrier for BART and regional transportation in the Bay Area. Um, we have resources for you um, that we can help connect you to if we can't directly provide. Um, so please do contact us, not just saying like, hey, I really, I want to be part of this program. We really were not able to accommodate students who, um, even if they really had that need, unfortunately, but we were able to connect them to programs such as Clipper Start, which is um, an in income qualifying program for lower fares on many Bay Area transit agencies. Um, we also had some issues with, um, do you want to speak a little bit more to that, Dave? What, the Clipper card foul up? of 2022. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh boy, where to even start? Um, so we've had a counter kind of a technical glitch over the pandemic uh, that none of us really foresaw. Basically what happens, and here's the backstory. Whenever a student gets their student ID, there's a serial number that's basically their uh, student ID. When you have your student ID number, that's usually attached to a clipper card number and it's in the back of the clipper cards and all clipper cards look alike. So it's gonna be pretty boring unless you get a sticker to cover the traditional clipper uh, symbol. That being said, uh, what happened was that over the course of the pandemic, we've had turnover with our internal, um, uh, it's, it's our IT department, but it deals with student affairs. So essentially there were a bunch of cards starting in 2021 that didn't match a student ID number to the Clipper card that they're holding, even though that they paid the $95 fee. What happens in that case is that we have to kind of wipe them out, start over and replace their cards, which causes a very monumental delay in trying to get your life together while you're here as a student. Uh, what happened this year was that instead of a few hundred, we ended up with close to 10,000, which is about one in four. And that required us to work with AC Transit a little more assertively, but also our internal controls to make sure that the numbers match up so that the students don't have to come to our office. Okay. Yeah, so as Dave mentioned, we had issues with uploading passes. Um, these were handled through AC Transit and one in five Clipper cards failed to renew the easy pass. Um, so this is something that we're still kind of dealing with. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it, and it also speaks to kind of the old technology that the TransLink and Clipper card programs have been around uh, for almost 20 years. And so the data transfer, when you're dealing with the backend software, and this comes from my experience working in uh, user experience and user design uh, for the venture card rollout about a decade ago. And if you remember, or if you're in the transit space and you remember how botched the venture card system is, I fear that we're going to have that same problem out here in the Bay Area come in a couple of years in making sure that the, uh, the reload times are right, um, that all the readers can read your card all at once. But when you're dealing with a 20-year-old technology, you're going to end up shoehorning a regional fair product that probably should have been done 25 years ago, but we, that's for a different rant for a different soapbox for a different day. Yeah, 
So I think we have about five more minutes. So I'm going to move through the next ones a little bit faster. Um, with regards to the Bay Pass, there is a Latin demand for it, um, also a black market. We have seen some um, some comments on Reddit and online of people like, hey, can you sell me your Bay Pass? Um, we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want a black market for Bay Passes. Um, we just want to accommodate folks and their transit options if possible. Um, but this program has been really successful. Um, ridership has been up 25.9% from November 2021 to 2022. And for Bay Pass users, they did show a 40% increase in ridership, as well as an increase in AC transit ridership. So just by having this regional pass, they are riding more transit than they would previously, which I think is a really interesting um, consideration with the future of this program. And how do we really get more people to ride transit? Well, we make it easier, right? We talk about transportation demand management as the first mile and the last mile. So think that if your first mile is taking the bus to BART, getting BART to the campus, and then taking another bus, all of that can be free or significantly reduced. Um, the future of Bay Pass, um, I know BART and MTC have mentioned offering it as an employee benefit. Um, and as we approach the 24 fiscal cliff, um, there's conversations around permanent funding and affordability, as well as the impact of mode split. And we do have a couple more minutes, so I'm going to go to the takeaways. Um, I really want to highlight these three. Um, give space to engage with the community. We really engage with the UC Berkeley community through the rollout of this pass, as well as the advocacy um, and the process of receiving this pass prior to 2022 um, through the Mobility and Equity Committee and just through engaging with our campus stakeholders, as well as AC Transit and BART. Um, with this, we also allowed progress over perfection. This program isn't perfect. It doesn't allow for transit options unlimited transit options for all of the UC Berkeley campus, and we know that. Um, but this is a really, really big first step in transit integration, not just for UC Berkeley, but for the Bay Area at large. I mean, this is really the first fair integration program um, that can have major impacts on regional fair integration for the Bay Area and the entire community. Dave, do you want to add anything here? Basically, it's an ongoing conversation with much of the students and to get them to realize how the real world operates as far, especially when it comes to transit policy, transit operations, transit processes. Basically, as an old wise millennial said, you got to trust the process. And this is what we have been fighting for over five years. And to get this far, signifies what we are willing to be official partners, considering that oftentimes colleges get left out of the conversation. So we wanna make sure that we can withhold that, but also, quote, don't leave money on the table. Yeah, and with that, thank you all so much for listening to us talk about this program today. We'll see you on the bus. Um, this is where you can find us. And if you have any questions, maybe we have a couple minutes to answer some. So uh, Laura had asked a couple of good questions. BART, um, BART as far as general usage uh, for the first six, seven, eight weeks is that that was the second most used uh, line that wasn't AC Transit. So it's starting to get there and we are working with MTC and BART to actually get survey data in relation to where they live, their local addresses and or um, general transit usage between those that have just the easy pass or those that have this event to pass. We don't know what the next phase of the Bay Pass pilot will be. Um, honestly, at this Bay point, it's TBA. Right now, uh, phase two is gonna look at employers who are going to actually contribute a buy-in. Um, and that will be for year two. As far as the Berkeley program is concerned, we're gonna address that this summer to make sure that we are doing our due diligence as far as uh, what to do with graduating students, uh, those that are not being readmitted back to the university. And if you're a Bay Pass user, what does that mean for your car? Yeah, and with regards to the question about the program being first in the UCs, um, I don't believe any other UC has 
this program or really the need for this program, because in the Bay Area, as I mentioned, there's 27 transit agencies. That's not really the case in other in, in uh, cities where other UCs are. I'll, I'll, I'll play on the side of caution, though, Nalani, that UCLA is centered to both Metro, it's Culver, uh, Santa Monica, uh, Long Beach, and they have a vastly different system in a pay per ride scheme in which that the university is going to be in charge of. But what we're doing is that we're purchasing the passes up front, but also kind of merging our regional networks a lot better than what uh, LA Metro is doing. No offense to my LA Metro people, you guys rock, I'm wearing your jacket now. 